Y'all, so it is Friday, June, what day is it? I think it's the 8th. It's the 8th, and it's like 10.30 at night. I am reading When Dimple Met Rishi. I actually didn't get far along in it last night. I, I only got to chapter 3. So, by the way, this is very bright orange. It's kind of like burning my eyes, but it's fine. I just read a part. We're in Rishi's perspective. So, I don't know if this is spoilers. I'm assuming it's not because I'm sure this is on the back of the book. Rishi and Dimple are matched to have an arranged marriage. Rishi says something that's kind kind of annoying. Actually, it's really annoying. Me and Dimple, I can see a lot of similarities between the two of us so far. I don't know how similar we are yet because I'm only on chapter three, so I mean, we could be completely different, but so far, very similar. Like, we're very dedicated to our education. We don't really care about the boys and the relationships. We just want to go to school. We want to get an education. We don't put necessarily how beautiful we look as top standards because, I mean, her mother says you're supposed to get beautiful so you can find a mate and have the relationship last forever, which I think is crazy. <laughs> yeah, so Rishi seems like a good kid. He really does, and I'm assuming this is something that he was just taught as a child, but he says something here. That kind of pisses me off. So first of all, Dimple is going to Stanford University for college and he's going to MIT and they are completely in opposite directions of each other really far away. He says that he everything would fall into place with the two of them. He'd go to MIT, she would transfer either there or somewhere close to there and I'm just like, how about you transfer to Stanford? Why do you automatically assume that she would transfer to MIT? And I can already tell that this is going to be a serious problem between the two of them because she is not a woman who puts up with shit like that. She's going to be like, listen, I don't care what you want. I'm going to Stanford. I can already tell you that I'm sure at first she's going to say that, maybe she'll change her mind, but that is not going to go over well for them. He's also basically planned out their entire lives. Like, they'd go date in college, then they'd get married in grad school, and, th or, and then they'd have kids a couple years after, and I'm just like, you do not plan out anybody's life but your own. Like, I get it. It's sweet that he's thinking about that. But first of all, he's never formally met her. So it's like a little weird. And second of all, when you plan your life as a couple, you're supposed to include the other person in those plans. You're not supposed to just make the plans and, you know, assume that they're going to be okay with it. Because guess what? There's going to be compromise. There's going to be talks. There might be some thoughts about it. But you can't just plan someone's life and that be it. That definitely kind of really annoyed me. But everybody says that Rishi's a really sweet person. So maybe this is just something he was taught because, I mean, I've met some men like that who just assume that the girl goes with them. And I've also met men that if they're not the breadwinner, then that's not okay. They want to make more money than their wife. So, you know, I, I've met several people. And I'm not saying all men are like that at all, at all. But just, I've met some people like that. And I don't think he's one of those guys. I think that he, he sounds sweet and sincere. Maybe to most people, they find that endearing and sweet. But I just don't find it that endearing. I've, and I've also heard people say that they really don't like Dimple. Which, so far, I like Dimple more than I do Rishi. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll understand why people feel the opposite of how I do or maybe I just have a completely different opinion and perspective on this. We'll see but I just wanted to start the vlog and give y'all my first opinion and yeah so I will update y'all later. Bye. Okay y'all so I am on chapter, what chapter am I on? Eight or six. Six. I'm blind sorry and I still don't see a problem with her at all. Like maybe it gets worse. They just met 
something happen and I'm just gonna tell y'all what happens hold on let me see if this is like on the back okay it's not in the summary but I wanted to tell y'all it's kind of on the back right here so I don't know if this is spoilers I really don't think it is to me it was obvious to begin with I just figured this. So basically what happens is there is this little program called InsomniaCon for people that are into technology and want to do it for a living. Dimple is like, hey, mom and dad, can I go to this thing? Expecting them to say no. And they were like, yeah, without even having to like make a case for herself or anything. So she thought that was super weird. And then this other guy, Rishi, his parents are like, yeah, we arranged a marriage for you. You're going to meet her at Insomnia Con. He completely was aware of it. He has a great relationship with his parents. And he is a hopeless romantic, obviously. Like, just how he acts, you can tell he's, like, so romantic. He goes up to her when they meet at this Insomnia Con. And he's like, hello, future wife. And she throws ice coffee on him, which it's actually on the back of the, the um, dust jacket. But I just like sat there and she like freaks out. Obviously, I would freak out too. People say she's mean because of how she treats Rishi. And like I said, I'm not like even a quarter of the way through the book. So maybe she does like start to be mean to him. And I'll let y'all know if I agree. But so far, I would have done everything she had done. Probably worse if a man that I did not know came up to me and had been like, hello, future WAP, and then followed me and found me again in another area and came up to me, I would have been so scared. Like, that's scary. Being a woman in this society, the only thing that goes through my brain anyways is watch out for people, make sure they're not predator, you need to have something in your hand at all times to use against that person so you can hurt them. Everything that goes through my mind when I'm out in public is try to defend yourself as you, the best you can, especially in parking lots, because they happen often in parking lots, rape and stuff. It's just something I constantly think about. And like Rose McGowan said this, I don't know how in I, I don't, Rose McGowan has some pretty radical things that she does that I don't agree with all of the time. And there's definitely some things that she does that I'm just like, that's insane. But there was this one thing that she said. She said that when a man and a woman go on a date for the first time, the worst thing that's going on in the man's mind is I might get rejected. She might not want to come upstairs to my apartment. And the one thing that's going on in the woman's mind that is her fear is that this man could possibly rape me. Or he could possibly bring me up to his apartment and date rape me. Or roofie my drink at dinner. That is all that goes through our heads. Then we hope and pray this guy is a good guy and is not going to rape me. And it happens so much. One in every three women get raped. And I have not ever met a woman that does not have a story of when they were harassed, abused, assaulted, all of it. I understand why she freaked out. I really, really do. Because I would have been so scared if that would have happened to me. So, to me, it's reasonable. She did lash out of him, but I felt like he was just kind of there. And she was so angry at her mom and dad that she was just like, you're standing here, I'm going to yell at you. And she eventually realized what she did was wrong and she shouldn't have done that. And she makes amends with him and she talks to the people responsible for all of this. And she even says that he's a victim as well. So, like, I don't see anything wrong with her other than the fact that she's a little, like, you know, uh, fasty. But I'm like this. Like, everything that she's done is stuff that I would do. And her personality is exactly like me. Even her fashion sense. All I wear is gray, black, navy blue, maybe a dark purple. Occasionally I'll wear red if it has Alabama on it. I'm very much like her. A lot like her. I hardly ever wear makeup. I'm such a nerd. It's not even funny. Like, I don't know. I'm just a lot like her. I think I said this in the earlier clip. I am way more concerned about my education and my career than I am getting in a relationship. You know, when it happens, it'll happen. I'm kind of have that mentality. 
So yeah, me and her are very similar. So if there's people that thought she was a bitch in this book, I'm sure that is what people think of me. <laughs> it's just fine. I don't care. If it makes me a bitch because I'd rather focus on my education right now in my 20s, my in my early 20s, I'm 20 years old, then worry about falling in love and getting married right now, then I guess I'm a bitch and I don't really care. So <laughs> if it makes me a bitch to defend myself and stand up for myself and fight back with people who are mean to me, then I guess I'm a bitch. So whatever. I just wanted to tell you all that. I'm going to continue reading and try not to update you as often, but I'm just trying to figure out the part where people think she's an awful bitch. So... Now, not everyone thinks this of her, just saying, but I've heard more people say this about her than, and I expected to open this book and hate her, and I don't. I love her, so I don't know. I'll update y'all later, so bye. Hello. Hey. We, we did switched. it different. <laughs> <laughs> that was unintentional, by the way. So we just went to the library, so this is going to be a library book haul. We joined the reading program. Yes, we did, because every 15 minutes you read... You get to write your name down, and then you put your name in a card. So and I'm going every to every sheet that you fill up. You yeah. Put your name in well, yeah, that's wrong. what I meant. I'm going to fucking destroy this reading program. Destroy it. I read like ten hours every day. You look like a cow in this. No, you don't. You do not look like a cow. You look like a rooster. <laughs> Okay, sorry, we're back. We had to talk about something. <laughs> she's going to show you the books that she's got. Yes. I got Second Sight by uh, Amanda Quick. And we've, uh, I am going to, okay, so we talked about this in the first clip. We had to start over because um, we did not cover the area code. <laughs> we had to go back and cover the well, barcode. Yes, where we're. Yeah, yeah cuz it says where we're from, so that's why we had to do that. But we already talked about this and I basically called Jane Ann Crince a dumb bitch. Sorry if you're watching Jane Ann Crince. Yes, no because... offense. I wanted more of the Acorn Society. I love this, this, these books, and I wanted more of it. And I did not know that she wrote it under more of these books under a different pen name. I think that's so shitty. I'm sorry. I think that's really yeah. shitty. But I guess if you're a big follower of her, which I wasn't at that time, I was just I was big on Sandra Brown, and I wanted a different author, so I chose her. Somebody told me about her. And I didn't realize that she wrote under Amanda Quick. I but mean, the I thing did, is, but I never read any of her books. If you went and told me about Jane Ann Krentz in this series, I would go under Krentz. I wouldn't go right, look at Amanda Quick. Go under Amanda Quick. Because I didn't I'm know that. I need to look to see if there's more books in this under her, this name. I'm really pissed that she did that. I don't think that's and okay. Then I also got White Lies. And this is by Jane Ann Krentz. And it's also... The Acorn Society novels. I love these. They're so good. Yeah, that's the second book. And she There's started. A lot in this series. She started in the fifth book. And when we were at the library, right. I was like, please don't pick out the fifth book in the series because she does that all the time. She'll start a series and it'll be right in the middle of it. And I'm just like, why yeah, do you she do goes, this? Don't pick me the fifth book in the series. And, and guess what? what she I picked do? me I picked up by accident the, the fifth, fifth book, book in, in the series. series. <laughs> and I'm just like, mother. She goes, Mama, you picked up the fifth book. <laughs> she has a gift. I don't know what to say. She does these crazy things. Jack is like, his head looks like it's gone from here. Boop, boop. Hello! Him be so sleepy. You be so sleepy. Oh, baby. You go sleep, okay? I love you. I'm sorry I bother you. Okay? So now on to my books, and we'll see if Mama wants to read any of these. So I've got Something Borrowed by Emily Griffin, and I absolutely love this movie. It is so great, and it has John Krasinski in it, Kate Hudson, the girl from Once Upon a Time, and just this great cast that I love. And that sexy guy from All My Children. That I would fuck. I'm in, um... Oh my gosh! The soap opera that Daddy watches. Young and the Restless. Yes. God. He's so fucking hot, though. I'd fuck him so much. <coughs> like, it's not even funny. It's sad that He's gorgeous. I can remember who he played in Young and the Restless, but, but not you All My can't Children. <laughs> you don't even like Young and the Restless. Some idiot decided to cancel All My Children. <laughs> so proper in the world. Oh, that's debatable. I thought One Life to Live was better than All My Children. Well, you're high. Thank you. Next book! This is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. <laughs> and I did not like this movie when it first 
when I first watched it, she told me it would be the best movie ever, and all these animals died, and I was really upset. But they came back to life! As evil demons! <laughs> the fuck? I really want to see if the book is good, because people say the book is a lot better, I went obviously. on a first date to see that movie. Oh, I'm never in Kansas. First... Oh, yeah. I went on one date once. It was awful, too. First date I that. hated that. I was so uncomfortable. I was so ready to go home. Sorry if you're watching this guy that you went on a date with. <laughs> But not really, because you were an idiot. Wait, okay, see. I have that got was bad. <laughs> I've got Philippe. Mom, you're not even paying attention. I paid attention to yours. I'm paying attention. You're reading. I was not reading. Mm -hmm. I was looking. Looking at the words, which is reading. <laughs> so next, I have Flame in the Mist, and this is a YA fantasy book that I have just wanted to really try. But I'm not sure I'll like it. People have had really mixed reviews, so I wanted to see if. I would like this first. So I got that. And then I got the Hazelwood, which I've also heard mixed reviews about. And this is just so beautiful. And I don't know what any both of these are about. I have no idea. The next book I got. Don't You Cry by Mary Kibika. <laughs> you are so dumb. She's a sad person. Just ignore her. This is a thriller that I've wanted to try. And I've got another one of her books. And it's on my bookshelf. But... Right now, my parents want me to try to not buy as many books and check them out at the library first. And if I really like them, I can get them. It didn't work out how I wanted it to. <laughs> I just want you to buy the first of each series. And then if you like them, then buy the series. Mom, that's not because okay. there's some series that you have DNF that you did not like. One series, the selection. And I knew I'd hate that one, so I only got the first book. That is the only series I've DNF'd. She she knows I'm right. That's why she's rolling her eyes and getting I just pissy. Can't think today. There's a whole closet full of stuff in there that you don't. That like. I didn't haven't read since I was in middle school. And the Cruel Prince, the first book in the series, I hated that. Got rid of that. All of them are not complete series. They're just first books that I hated. Next. So read from the library. That's what they're there for. Next. I got Salem's Lot by Stephen King, which is a big-ass book, by the way. And people say this one is one of his scarier books. Like, really scary. Is about witches? <coughs> Considering it's called Salem's Lot. I know. I'm going to sure. punch you in the throat. If it's not, then that's a deceiving title. <laughs> Last book I got is something a subscriber has wanted me to get since I got this channel. And I've not ever bought it in the store because it's always like $30. And I'm like, I can't. So I found it at the library, and I am finally going to read it, and it is Name in, wait, The Name of the Wind, and it's about magicians, so I'm really excited, and it's an adult fantasy, and I love adult books. I also have a large TBR that I drew, so I'm going to try to get through that. I'm going to renew these books, because I know June 23rd is not going to be enough time to read all of these. As of right now, I have been told, or the rules are, that I can read one of the books per category at least so that's good and then if I don't read it I put it back in the cup to draw it later so that's good that is all I am going to continue in Dimple Met Rishi I might have to end this vlog and make this a part two because it's getting kind of long but we shall see y'all later so bye hey y'all so I just wanted to talk to y'all about when Rimple did or when Dimple Met Rishi I'm can I'm continuing reading and I'm on chapter 10. So I have some thoughts on this book. This is one of those books that really stimulates my brain and really makes me think about things, especially considering I relate to the main character so much. So I get that people have a problem with Dimple and I can see why. She is kind of a break, she's definitely abrasive and she has her moments where she can be quite mean, but I feel like she has a right to be in a sense because and it's I feel like in our society in general people expect women that marriage is the ultimate goal for us and that if you're not married you still get called an old maid in high school my nicknames were Virgin Mary I got called a prude I got called frigid like, it's crazy because I was focused on my education so I could go to college and have a career. 
I got called all sorts of names. So I understand where she's coming from. I really, and I even, I still don't understand completely what she's coming from because she's from a different culture than me. It's, it's a lot harder for her. But I'm just trying to make a point that women in general have that issue of if marriage isn't your ultimate goal, then there's something wrong with you. And I hear that to this day. People don't even ask me like, at first, what are you, it's your major in college? Are you in college? What do you want to do with your career and your life? I get asked, do you have a boyfriend? Are you interested in anyone? Those are the questions I get asked first, generally. And it's really irritating because people just assume that my entire life is based around a relationship. I'm not saying that I don't want a relationship. That's that's not true. I do want one eventually. And if it happened now, it would happen. But, I mean, it's just not what I'm focused on. My, my mom gets mad at me and so do my friends because a guy will literally hit on me and I will have no idea that it happened. Like, I'll be like, what? Because I'm just so oblivious to it. She's also just worried about the fact that Rishi isn't exactly like it doesn't seem he's 100% dedicated to this. And this is something she really wants. I kind of feel for her in the sense that if I really wanted something like that and I had somebody who only solely went there basically for me, I would be definitely uncomfortable with that. I, I just completely understand where her anger is coming. I can't understand it completely because I don't have her culture. And just generally for women of color it is so difficult for them to it's just harder for them not because they're not talented or gifted they could be more gifted than me but simply because I'm a white woman it's 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 easier for me to get along in the world but she's already having trouble in society she has trouble with her parents She's kind of just letting all of this out. He, she's taking it out on him. And maybe he doesn't deserve it. And I'm definitely not I'm, not... I'm not saying he does deserve it. I think he's genuinely a good guy. And also, like, she reminds me so much of myself. Sorry, my mama came in. So what I was saying was Dimple is, is very abrasive. She's high strung. She, she's just very controlling. She freaks out easily. She gets angry easier. Rishi is the perfect compatibility for her. And my parents and my friends has always told me that I need a man who is calm. He's collected. He's not so high strung. He's laid back. He's chill. He's, he's good. He doesn't lose his patience very easily. So I need someone to balance me out. And I feel like she needs Rishi to balance her out and I feel like Rishi needs her to motivate him more and to really get she can help him find what he really wants to do and she will push him to go for it they need each other you know what I mean my mom and dad are like that they're so compatible for each other I'm exactly like my dad I'm so controlling not not, not like in a sense that I like to control the people around me I just like to control my life. I like to try to control, I just like to control things in my life. I'm not a person that wants to control other people, but just me. But it gets a little out of hand. I am so ambitious. I am so determined. It's to, to a fault almost. I'm just really like Dimple a lot. I'm definitely fasty and I can be very what what happens is I'm very honest I'm an incredibly honest person and if you ask me a question I'm gonna be upfront with you I'm gonna tell you how it is and all and if you don't like it I'll just be like well then you shouldn't have asked me I'm just a brutally honest person and people convey that as me being mean but I never say anything with the intention to hurt someone's feelings it's just me having this honesty thing in my head where people claim they want to hear the truth, but then when they hear the truth, they get angry. So that's always confused me, always, because I'm just like, you ask me for my honest opinion, and then I tell you, and then you get irritated. So like, what do you want? 
you should have said, I want your opinion, but lie to me, you know, like, I don't know, I just relate to her a lot, I don't find her awful, mainly because <laughs> I find myself to be this way, but I think Rishi's gonna be great for her, I need a guy like Rishi, I need a guy a lot like Rishi, I'm just so, I need a guy to calm me, when I freak out, I need him to calm me down, I need a guy that has this soothing voice that says, you know what, you can't control everything that goes on in your life. You're going to have to let some things go. You need to stop and smell the roses because I need that in a partner. I need that in my future boyfriend or husband whenever it happens. I need that because I, I just, I need it. I know I do. I'm aware of that. I know who I am. And I know the kind of partner I need because my, 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 everyone I know has told me this for years. I'm going to continue reading. I just wanted to talk. I love this book. It really makes me think. And I love books like that that make me like really want to pick up the camera and talk. And I like when it makes me like look at myself more. So yeah. But that is all. And I will see y'all later. Bye. Hey y'all. So I just wanted to end the vlog. I just wanted to end the vlog. I just wanted to end the vlog because it's 28 minutes so after this clip it'll probably be about 27 28 minutes so I definitely need to stop it I don't want it to be 45 minutes long I'm just gonna make a part two of when dimple met Rishi vlog and yeah and I'm gonna try not to vlog as much this time <laughs> when I'm reading it I'm still gonna vlog but just not like every other chapter like I did but this book is just I love it and like I've said a bajillion times it just makes me think and that's why I pick up the camera that is it for today's vlog and I will see y'all later bye oh wait 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 before I say bye I'm going to tell y'all that I'm going to do a booktube newbie tag this week I'm going to do a mid middle of the year book tag and I'm doing my May wrap up. I'm thinking that maybe I should do maybe a ship it tag or like Mary. Is it Mary? Fuck kill. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I'm sure there's a cleaner version for it for the internet. Maybe I'll do something like that or books that I really would like to read this summer. That actually might be what I do. The books that I would really like to read this summer. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I just wanted to tell you all what I was planning to film this week. And I will just keep you all updated. So I will see you all in the next vlog. Bye.